So we are still looking at the whole idea of graphing more complex functions as well as writing their equations, okay? And we talked about the basic format of your sine, cosine, tangent functions. Okay, your basic format is y equals, what comes first? A, and then you have your trig function, so the sine, cosine, tangent, and then what comes after that? Then it comes B, standard B, and then X minus C, and then plus D. Where each one of these letters represents something happening to the graph, the A, your amplitude, your vertical stretches and shrinks, B, uh, effect, affecting your period, telling you how many cycles you have in between zero and two pi, as well as um, your horizontal stretches and shrinks, C, representing your horizontal translations, and D, representing your vertical translations. So when you are um, writing uh, your own equations, you need to think of that type of format, okay? What's A, what's B, what's C, and what's D, okay? And you pretty much plug in. All right, so we're looking here. We have this graph here. Um, we are finding, we're not writing it just yet, but we are, no, we are. Yes, we are. Uh, we're finding our amplitude and period of the graph, okay? Amplitude. What is amplitude? Real quick, what is it? It's, it's, oh, I heard two different things. I heard that it's the distance from the middle to a max, and then I heard something else. Something about max. Something else. Whatever. All right, so basically there is a type of equilibrium line that basically cuts straight through your, your graph, okay? And the amplitude is going to be the same whether you go from that line to a max or from that line to a min. And what is that distance there? It's three. So your amplitude is three. Okay? Now, P in this case represents our period. Okay? There is a formula to find your period. What's the formula to find your period? Two pi over the absolute value of B. Okay? We are going to need that when we actually arrive at the equation. How long does it take for this graph to complete one cycle? So it takes 12 units, so our period is 12. Now, we do need to use that to help us write our equation, which is the y equals part down here, okay? Now, is this a sine graph or a cosine graph or a tangent graph? Sine, and you know this because it starts at zero. Do you realize that all sine functions can be written as cosine functions? Because they're nothing but, they are basically the exact same, okay? It's just one is shifted over. So you could technically write a cosine function, but the easiest one is the sine function for this. Okay? So we need A. What's A? Three. So we have three sine. Now we have to figure out what our B is. Our B is not 12. 12 is our period. So we need to set 12 equal to that formula for the period. Okay? I don't know why I put negative B. <laughs> Thing. I'm thinking like quadratic negative over 2a. Okay. All right. So, how do I solve for b? What do I do? Multiply by both sides. So it's going to be 12b equals 2 pi. What happened to the absolute value? Well, considering that this graph of sine still goes up, then down, then back up, let's just know that it didn't reflect it here. So, we know that nothing happened there. And then the last step is to what? Divide by 12, so we'll have 2 pi over 12, which reduces down to, and that is your B that goes into this equation. So we're going to have pi over 6. Do I have any horizontal shifts? Translations, I mean. If it's sine, no, it won't, because like you said, it started at 0. That's how we knew it was sine. So it didn't move any. Did it move up or down any? No, it didn't. It still crossed at zero. So there's no C, no D. So now that we have to put X minus zero plus zero, we can just say X and that would be it. And you don't necessarily have to include the parentheses either. You can just write a sine of pi over six X, no parentheses. It'll still be the same thing. Questions on this? Look at your graph, determine what's the amplitude, what's the period, 
Did it move left or right, up or down? Anyway. Let's look at this one. It says find the amplitude in the period of the uh, of the graph and then get the equation. You guys want to try this one on your own? Are you still want to do this one together? All right, so what's the amplitude? 0. 0.5. <laughs> it is 0. 0.5, okay? It's there. What's the period? Pi over 2. Okay, so using that, um, did you write a sine graph or a cosine graph? Cosine graph. So then if you wrote a cosine graph, which is the easier of the two to write, what, is, uh, what goes in front? 0.5 or 0 0.5, and then what was your B? Four. Your B is 4. Okay, so you should have said pi over 2 equal to 2 pi over B. Yes, you can cross multiply here and realize that B is 4. Did it have any horizontal shifts or vertical shifts? No, so then you could have just left it like this. If you include the parentheses, it's going to be correct. Questions? Remember, from the period, um, the period is the distance, the horizontal distance it takes to complete one full cycle. So you know, with cosine, it crosses the y-axis at, at its maximum point. So then you want to see how long does it take for it to reach its next maximum, and that hence will be the period. So from maximum to maximum, that total distance is pi over two. So then that will be your. Period. Another way you can tell is um, you could determine your number of cycles, right? Like, if, if, say if this graph was stretched all the way over to 2 pi, and you counted how many cycles occur between 0 and 2 pi, you, that would be your B, and you could plug it into the 2 pi over B formula, and you can find your period that way. So there's a couple of different ways you can find your period, but usually the easiest way, especially from a graph, is to see from max to max, min to min, or... What if this graph didn't even give you that part? What if it stopped right, right here and didn't give you that? Then you don't panic. You can do max to min, then multiply by two. Because from max to min is half of a period. So if it just gave you that much, then you can just double that length, and then you'll know exactly where your next max occurs. So that's pi over four. Pi over four times two is 2 pi over 4, which is pi over 2. Okay. Got a lot of scratches on that. That's okay. It's the course, so that's good. Here we go. Here's another one. A little bit more IB type, okay? But don't let this throw you off. This is the graphical function of the form y equals p cosine qx is given by the diagram below. You have to find p and q. Now, this is a little different because they use p's and q's and not a, b, c's, or d's. But don't let that throw you off. The P represents what? It, it represents your amplitude. It represents your A. Because it's in front of the cosine, it's attached to the cosine. And what does Q represent? It represents your B, which usually is used with your what? Your period. Okay? So to find the value of P and Q, you really are finding A and B, essentially. So don't let the letters throw you off either. Just look at where they're placed. Because it, you know, that doesn't change. What is our amplitude here? It's 30. It goes up to positive 30, down to negative 30. So our amplitude, or our P, is a positive 30. And our Q, which is our B, is going to be what? It's going to be, it is going to be 4. Okay. What's our period here? Pi over 2. So we know that pi over 2 has to equal 2 pi over b. And so then we would cross multiply just like before. And we see that b, aka q, has to be 4. Questions? We are going to write a cosine and sine graph for this one. We'll do this one together. Next one you're doing, y'all. Okay? 
Because remember, any cosine graph could be written as a sine graph because they're nothing, they are the exact same, just one is shifted over. Okay? For this particular problem, what do you think will be the easier one to start with? So probably cosine because we still have a maximum this thing at this point right here. Okay? So let's write our cosine graph. Y equals A cosine B X minus C. We might not have everything, but let's just, you know, write it out there. Let's start with our amplitude. What is our amplitude? And it's going to be two, because remember, from this dotted line, which is that equilibrium line, cutting your uh, your wave like straight through the middle, you got negative 1.5 all the way up to positive 0.5. That is a length of two. Okay? So right now we have y equals two. Another way you can figure out your amplitude is you could subtract Another way you could do it is you could take <laughs> your maximum value, like its height, and you could take the minimum value, you could subtract them from each other, and then divide by two to find your amplitude. Okay, so another way that you can find your amplitude is max minus min divided by two. Okay, so that was what one half minus our min, which is at negative seven over two. And divided by two. So then you would have eight over two divided by two. What's eight over two? Four. What's four divided by two? Two. Now again, I mean we could easily see from the graph, but sometimes, you know, just in case if you ever have to question, it looks like it's on point five, but I don't know for sure if it's on point five, you can always do it that way. Okay? What's our period? Or what's our B, if you can tell? Okay. Our period is 4 pi, which means our B is going to be what? Our B is going to be 1 half. So remember, you can always do 4 pi equals 2 pi over B. So that would be 4 pi B equals 2 pi, and you divide. Remember, another way you can see how many cycles occur between 0 and 2 pi. From 0 to 2 pi, that is how much of a cycle? It's half. So B is half. So you do a couple, you, I mean, you can do these things a couple of different ways to get your answer. Did I have a vertical, sh uh, horizontal shift? No, it's still across the y axis with, at a maximum. So if my maximum is still across my y axis, then I'm good to go. I don't have a vertical, I mean a horizontal shift. So I'm just going to leave that as x. But I do have a vertical shift. And what is that? The negative 1.5 or negative 3 over 2. Yes, that midline, okay, this midline right here that cuts our graph straight through the middle, that is our vertical shift. Okay, we're going to write a sign next, okay? Now, the beauty about writing signs and cosine graphs together is that you pretty much did a majority of your work um, writing cosine. Because the amplitude, whether it's sine or cosine, the amplitude is not going to change. Your vertical shift is not going to change. Your period is not going to change. The only difference, you remember when we were talking about the differences between sines and cosines? What was the difference? It shifted. So the only thing that's really going to change in this is the C, okay? So our A is still 2, our B is still 1 half, we definitely don't have a C, and our D is still negative 3 over 2. So all that information is the same, it really is just the, um, the shift that changes. Now, we know normally that sine crosses the y-axis at what? It's, it crosses at 0, 0. But, in this particular case, and we cross the zero zero, and then on top of that, it goes up to start, correct? 
Like it goes up to one, then down, and then back up, right? Where on this graph would you say that sign starts? Or could start? Right back here, right? And what is that value? It is negative pi, okay? It is negative pi. So if this is the start of sine, that is my, my C, that is my horizontal shift. I went to the left pi units. How do I indicate going to the left pi units? And think about it, if you if you saw this equation, I asked you to describe the transformation, you would tell me left pi, pi units, which means you would subtract pi from each one of your x values, correct? Well then there you go. And there's your graph, for, uh, there's your equation for sine. I'll just try the next one on your own. Okay, so we're writing a cosine function. We need our A, which is, it is 8. Remember, from max to min, that distance half. Awesome. Uh, what was our, what was our B? Our B was six. Now we look from max to max, even from min to min, it's not really on an actual value. We can kind of try to figure this out, but we can look and we can see that from zero to pi is three cycles, which means from zero to two pi it would be six. Hence, that's what B is. Uh, do I have a um, horizontal shift? No, I don't because my max still occurs on the y axis. So this is just six x. And technically, I'm going to. I just want to write this without the parentheses. You wrote it with, it's fine, same thing. And then, do I have a vertical shift? No, okay, let's see. Question?
A was four, okay? You had a maximum and positive four, minimum and negative four, so that clearly means your, your A is four. Uh, what's your B? Your B is two. It completes two cycles from zero to two pi. And C, which represents our shift, what is our C? C is pi over two, very important. Okay? That means we'll have to start here and work its way to that. Okay? Yes? All right. For this one, it says uh, the graph y equals p plus q cosine x is shown below. The graph passes through the point 0, 3 and pi negative 1, just in case you were curious. Like, he never really doesn't look like it's Yes, it is. <laughs> yes, All right. right. So what is p? p is 2 because p is being added to q cosine x. So really, this is q cosine x plus p, which represents your what? P represents your what? Oh. And, yep, and he has that backwards. P is your what? It's your vertical shift. We went up one unit. Don't let that throw you off. Because they can't do that. It's a trick you. All right? Q, though, is your amplitude, which is two. Mm -hmm. You see that? You got to be careful. Since it was being added, technically you can put it at the beginning or you can put it at the end. Don't let that throw you off. I think one of your ones that you guys had to graph in your homework was like that, wasn't it? No, never mind. Okay, I thought it was. <laughs> All right. Just, you, just be careful, okay? If the vertical shifts at the beginning, let's move it to the end if it, if it helps. Questions? Questions on writing equations. Okay, just to kind of Sum everything up just to review, making sure that you guys, you know, are okay with the goal, which was to be able to write equations. A represents your what? Your amplitude. You can find your amplitude by doing what? One person? Give me one way to find the amplitude. Megan. Max minus B divided by 2 or a different way, Bethany? That's right, the distance of your max or your mid to the midline. Very good. B is what? Anybody? Your number of cycles between 0 and 2 pi for sine and cosine. We haven't done a tangent one yet, but if it's tangent, it's your number of cycles between 0 and pi. Um, B is also used to find your what? Raise hand. Your period, yes, it is used to find your period, which is a formula, raise hand, yes. Two pi of the absolute value B, very good. C represents your what, anybody? Horizontal translations, and D? Vertical translations, so of course you can always use your graph to determine all that. This is going to be very beneficial and helpful when we move to the next thing, which we'll talk about in the next class, which are your application problems. Yes. Lovely grow.